This video is sponsored by Rocketstock.com. Hey, what's going on internet? In this video, I wanna talk about creating four different types of abstract motion graphic techniques with After Effects. Hope everyone's having a great day today or a great evening, depending on when you're watching this video. My name is Josh Noel and I'm from Sunduck Film. So we talk a lot about motion graphic techniques here on the channel. And this one specifically is talking about abstract motion graphics, which is great for a wide variety of projects. And this is great just to add more motion graphic techniques to your arsenal. So enough of talking, let's jump into our tutorial and talk about these four abstract motion graphic techniques. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and the first technique we're gonna talk about is creating a motion graphic grid. And I don't mean the grid effect, which is creating this grid background, and I'm talking about creating a custom grid using any shape that you want. So we'll come over here and say, grab one of the tools here at the top. We'll grab the ellipse tool because that's one of the best tools. And then we'll come over here and we'll just draw out a very small circle. It could be anywhere on the composition, and that looks good. Then what we're gonna do is come here to add and we're gonna add a repeater. With our repeater opened up, we can increase the number of copies, which is cool. And then we can open up the transform repeater and we come here to the X position and you know maybe narrow this down by a little bit. And you know, that looks fine. And we don't have to go across the entire composition. I right, can do what you want. And then from here, we'll go to add and we'll add another repeater. This time we'll open it up, go to transform repeater two, set the X position where it says 100, set it down to zero. Then come here to the Y position and we can bring this down just by a little bit. So kind of evenly space that out and that looks good. Then we increase the number of copies and now we kind of have our own motion graphic grid going on here. Now what we can do here is go to ellipse one, come here to ellipse path one and we can adjust the size if that was a little bit too big and I brought the size down by a touch. And what's cool here is that we can animate the opacity here to fade in and out. So this is cool. What we can do here is all click the stopwatch for end opacity and type in wiggle open parenthesis we'll do like one comma 100 close parenthesis that will allow us to animate our grid by a little bit and of course you can do it for the repeater one as well so now you should have something like this and what's cool about this grid technique instead of just animating it like you would any other type of motion graphic we can use this as like a juxtaposition element so what i mean by that is we have our composition here we have this run up for like a few frames and then we go to edit split layer and then what we'll do here is just hit P on our keyboard for position and we'll just reposition this to another, you know, position on our composition. Then we can move forward again, split the layer and remove this around our composition. So this is going to just create like a little bit of a distortion, you know, among our entire, you know, composition. It's a really cool technique uh, if you just want to get some random elements, some abstract elements up in here and make it look pretty cool. So now that our grid technique has been split up and moved around the composition, we can see we kind of get this abstract motion graphic here, which looks pretty cool. And you know, obviously by itself is not enough. So that's why we have three other uh, techniques in this tutorial. So for our second technique, we're going to create a line motion graphic, and this will make it look a little bit more geometry based or you know more abstract, if you will. So to get this started, we'll grab the pen tool here at the top, and then we'll click on the word fill, set it to none, click OK, click on the word stroke, set it to solid color, click OK. And then you can use a stroke width of whatever you want. I'll use three. And simply all we'll do is make sure no layer selected and we'll click a point, hold down shift on our keyboard, click another point, and simply now you have a line like this. Now what's cool about this, we can open this up, go to add, and we'll add a trim paths. Then we'll open up trim paths one. We'll set the end percent all the way down to zero percent. And then we can add a keyframe for it. We'll move forward in time and we'll set it up to 100%. So, and then we'll select both keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard to make them easy, ease keyframes. And now we'll have a simple line just animating in here. And then if you want, we can add a keyframe for start and then move forward a little bit more and then set it up to 100% and this will animate it off if you want to animate it off. And then we'll make those easy, ease keyframes, of course. And then if we want, we can easily duplicate this by going to edit, duplicate. And then we'll just hit P on our keyboard for position and we can easily just move these around the composition as we see fit. And these will randomly be put in place and we can offset it in time, duplicate it, you know, offset that in time and then just reposition everything. They kind of seem like we're doing a little bit of work here, but the thing is we're just being abstract with this. And this is how you start building out, you know, big compositions by quickly duplicating what you've already done and reordering it around your composition. And before we jump into our next technique, I want to talk about using stock elements to help increase the value of your composition. So one of these stock elements I want to use here today is light leaks. 
which are used to overlay nice light elements over to your footage and your After Effects compositions to increase the production value of each individual shot. And the pack that I'm using today is called Spectrum from Rocketstock.com, who is sponsoring this video. And Spectrum comes with 64 vintage light leaks, all recorded in 4K resolution. And what we can do here is easily drag and drop a light leak that we like here in After Effects. And what I can do is come here to our blend mode and set this to screen. And because of this one light leak, we're adding a little bit more movement to our composition, which makes it more interesting. So if you want to check out Spectrum or any of the other amazing products over at rocketstock.com, you can check our links in the video description. So now that we have a few lines in here, I want to start talking about shapes and there's so many different techniques that we can apply with shapes. So to get started, let's come over here and grab say the polygon tool, which is a cool tool. And we'll keep fill off and keep the stroke at three stroke width. And we'll come here and draw out a, you know, a pentagon like this and then what we'll do is actually go to the align tab which is over here on the right and center this up with their center alignment tabs and then if you don't see the line tab go to window align and there's that align tab so we can come here to polystar one come here to polystar path one and set the number of points down to three and this will create a triangle and then we'll come back here to add and we'll add another trim paths and we'll open up trim paths and we'll set the end percent down to zero we'll add a keyframe for end percent move forward in time and set it up to 100% and make the keyframes easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And this will create a small little shape in here. It's very much abstract. But what we can do here is duplicate our shape. And then what we can do is control double click the pan behind tool here at the top. And this will center the anchor point. And then we'll hit S on keyboard for scale and scale this up by a little bit. Then what we can do is come here to our contents, go into the polish star one, go to the stroke one, and then we can hit this plus button here next to the dashes. And this will make it all completely a dash and it's a little bit of a nice abstract shape and we can offset this layer in time by a little bit so it's not coming in at the same time and it's cool with this technique you can use any type of shape that you want so also in this composition uh, as you can see that we created circles and it's the same exact technique as the triangle so it's really up to you how you want to use this technique and lastly in our final technique i want to talk about using symbols so this is a random objects that you can easily just pop in and out of your composition so and if you create a random symbol, you I mean you can really just be creative with this. I'm just going to create like a, I guess this is called a chevron. Um, not 100% sure what that's called, but I think that's what it's called. And I simply created a chevron by grabbing the pen tool and I clicked one point. And simply all I did here was kind of create like a triangle here. And it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. But what's cool about this is I can go to our shape layer, go to add, and I can add a repeater. Come here to repeater one and I'll go to the transform repeater one. And we'll set our X position down to zero and set our Y position down by a little bit. And now we have like this cool emblem here. And then what we can do here is go back to the number of copies and we can add a keyframe for this, move it forward in time, set the number of copies down to zero. And these will all like animate on like that. And then we'll move forward a little bit, add a keyframe to keep three copies up, move forward towards the end of our animation and set it down to zero. And now this will just animate on and it'll go away. And then we can kind of just trim everything up. And now, of course, you can use this element and duplicate it across the rest of your composition. So there's our four abstract motion graphic techniques. If you want to learn more about motion graphic techniques, you can check our links in the description. We've created a handful of tutorials just like this one, just on different concepts. If you did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.